Every four minutes, someone is diagnosed with leukemia, lymphoma, or other blood cancers and genetic disorders. For many, the only hope of a cure is a bone marrow, blood stem cell, or umbilical cord blood transplant. Both the diagnosis and the treatment can be overwhelming, but by understanding the process of searching for a donor, undergoing the transplant, and making your way towards recovery, you can take charge and advocate for yourself or a loved one. First, what exactly is a transplant? Well, a transplant is the infusion of healthy blood stem cells into the body to replace the diseased cells. Transplants are either autologous, meaning the cells are collected from the patients themselves, or allogeneic, which means the cells are collected from a donor. Blood stem cells produce the healthy blood cells we need to live. They're found either in the bone marrow, which is inside the hollow cavities of the body's large bones, in the peripheral blood in small numbers, or cord blood, which is the blood that remains in the umbilical cord following a baby's birth. If you've been diagnosed with a condition that is treatable with a transplant, you should schedule a consultation at a transplant center as soon as possible. Your physician will explain your treatment options and recommend the most appropriate type of transplant for you. If time allows, many patients try to seek a second opinion about the treatment plan. To increase the probability of a successful transplant, the human leukocyte antigen tissue typing, or HLA, of a donor must match as closely as possible with that of the recipient. These genes encode for proteins on the surface of the cells in the body, including white blood cells. Also known as antigens, they regulate the immune system and enable the body to differentiate foreign cells from those of the patients themselves. About 30% of patients have a family member who is a close enough match to donate. The remaining 70% have to search the worldwide registry of unrelated donors. Since tissue type is inherited, a patient's best chance of finding a genetic match lies with those of a similar ethnic or racial background. In some cases, doctors may recommend what is known as a haploidentical transplant, which means that rather than being a perfect match, the donor is a half match. The donor used is a relative. Parents are always at least a half match for their children, and siblings have a 50% chance of being a half match for each other, not to mention a 25% chance of being a perfect match. Another option for patients for whom a sufficiently matched related or unrelated donor cannot be found is an umbilical cord blood transplant, which we'll learn about later on in this video. Since the search process can take some time, it's important to act quickly. This includes a prompt visit to a transplant center. HLA tissue typing the patient and blood relatives right away, and beginning an unrelated donor search. To save time, these can be done concurrently. Thanks to a central database called Bone Marrow Donors Worldwide, or BMDW, transplant centers can search the tissue types of millions of donors from dozens of registries in countries around the world. With any luck, a donor will be identified rapidly, and the transplant can proceed without delay. If there are no matching donors, some patients and their families choose to run recruitment drives in the hope of finding a match. Now, let's take a moment to understand the transplant process from the donor's perspective. Remember, approximately 70% of patients must rely on volunteers who have joined one of the worldwide donor registries, like Gift of Life, which is one of two public registries based in the United States. Donors are recruited at recruitment drives, special events, or by requesting a testing kit online. They swab cells from inside the cheek, and this sample is analyzed to determine the donor's HLA tissue type. This information is then listed in the registry of volunteers who are willing to participate in a transplant if they match a patient in need. The registry is searched every day by transplant centers around the world. When someone is identified as a potential match, he or she is asked to give a sample of blood to confirm the match and test for infectious diseases. If there is more than one potential match, transplant centers often request confirmatory testing of multiple people simultaneously to expedite the search process and find the best possible donor. Once a donor is selected, he or she receives counseling on the donation process, undergoes a physical exam, and finally, donates either bone marrow or peripheral blood stem cells. The donation process depends on the source of the cells being transplanted. Bone marrow is collected in a hospital operating room using needles and syringes while the donor is under anesthesia. Donors who give peripheral blood stem cells must first receive five days of injections of a medication that causes the bone marrow to increase the production of blood stem cells and release them into the bloodstream. 
The cells are collected through a process called apheresis, where blood is removed from one arm, processed by a cell separating machine that removes the stem cells, and then returns the blood to the donor through the other arm. The collected bone marrow, or stem cells, are then delivered by courier to the patient's hospital for the transplant. Oh, and the cord blood is simply collected after a baby's birth. It's packaged and shipped to a repository where it's tested, processed, and frozen in liquid nitrogen. If a patient's tissue type adequately matches that of a cord blood unit, it's sent to the patient's hospital for the transplant. Because cord blood stem cells are immature, a perfect match is not necessary. Now, let's discuss what patients might expect during a transplant. Once a donor has been found and medically cleared, the patient undergoes a conditioning regimen to destroy the diseased cells and the entire immune system so the body does not attack the new healthy cells it's about to receive. The conditioning regimen depends on many factors and may include chemotherapy and radiation. This type of transplant is known as a myeloablative transplant. A reduced intensity transplant, also known as non-myeloablative transplant or a mini transplant, uses less intense treatment and relies on a patient's own immune system to help fight the disease. Reduced intensity transplants are an option for older patients. The transplant itself is surprisingly simple. The donated cells are infused into the patient through an IV line. Amazingly, once inside the body, they find their way to the bone marrow where they begin to grow new, healthy blood cells in a process known as engraftment. As the recovery begins, blood counts begin to rise and patients may experience certain side effects. Since the immune system has been suppressed to prevent rejection of the new cells, the body is susceptible to infection. Also, graft versus host disease, or GVHD, can occur when the immune cells from the donated marrow, blood stem cells or cord blood, attack the body of the transplant recipient. This condition can affect many different parts of the body, but the skin, eyes, liver, and gastrointestinal tract are the most commonly involved. Your transplant physician will discuss strategies to maximize your comfort and minimize the risk and severity of these and other side effects with you. After the transplant, patients are susceptible to infections. Before leaving the hospital, your home or temporary living arrangements near the transplant center needs to be prepared to protect your health. This includes cleaning the house thoroughly, educating visitors about the importance of hand washing, and following guidelines on food preparation, caring for pets and children, plants, and more. Even if you're the caregiver and not the patient, a transplant can be overwhelming and even a little frightening. Being a caregiver is an important job filled with many responsibilities, including understanding new medical information, providing emotional support, advocating for the patient, as well as juggling home, work, and family obligations. Remember to take good care of yourself along the way, and don't be afraid to ask for and accept help. The success of bone marrow transplantation is among the world's most significant medical achievements. Today, survival rates are higher than ever, thanks to important advances that have improved treatment outcomes. The recovering from a transplant can be an extended process. If it all goes well, the end result can be a return to a healthy daily routine with the people you love. We hope this video has answered many of your questions and given you the tools to be a proactive participant in your treatment and care. Remember, once a transplant has been recommended, Family members should get tested right away, and an unrelated donor search should begin. Seek second opinions. Choose the right transplant center for you. Ask questions. Come to doctor appointments with questions prepared, and bring pen and paper to take notes. And ask a friend or loved one to go with you to help retain the information discussed.